Welcome to the Creepin' It Real Show, your one-stop shop for weird news, movie reviews, otherworldly, and paranormal shenanigans. We'll take a dive into what's going on in creepy pop culture. You can follow Creepin' It Real Show on Twitter at creepin' underscore it. You can email us at creepinitrealshow at gmail.com. And you can also go to our website, creepinitshow.com. Welcome to Creeping It Real. I'm one of your hosts, Yardley, coming live and direct from Atlanta and from the great state of California. How's it going, Moni? What's up, everybody? It's going well. We actually have some sunshine here for the weekend. I've heard that we can't enjoy it for too long, but we are loving it. We're breaking out the shorts, everybody in their flip-flops. It's fantastic. Hey, that's pretty good. It's pretty sunny, um, you know, on this side. And... uh for the most part, it's been cool, but today is one of those slightly chilly, uh, but very beautiful days. So really can't complain. How's it up your end, Christy? Yeah, up here, same thing. I uh, went to a outdoor, half outdoor, half indoor St. Patrick's Day um, celebration at the Battery, which is the new baseball park here in Atlanta. And it's basically like an entire city in there. They have everything um, tons of bars and clubs and basically the entire place, the entire battery was one giant celebration for St. Patrick's Day. So happy St. Patrick's Day today to my fellow co-hosts. Um, and yeah, we did it right. We, <laughs> we, we started at like noon and finished at like 4 a.m. So I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but yeah. Okay. If you're going to do it, go all in. Exactly. That's what I say. My best friend's birthday is today, too. So she always, you know, that's what we were doing was celebrating her birthday. And whew, I'll tell you what, it's going to take me a few days. Otherwise, it's going well. I actually got to wear a, a almost like summer-like dress for the celebration is what I was getting at. And uh, yeah, that was not planned. It was a little chilly, but not bad. So no complaints. Yeah, you know what? I didn't go outside as much Um you know, yesterday, I actually ended up buying like this video game. So I ended up lushing around the house, um, playing that game and, you know, getting a little fucked up. But so I, <laughs> I, I enjoyed, <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed myself as well. Now, initially, I didn't have any weird news, but I will give an update. So there have been more reviews on Jordan Peele's Us um, have, that have been submitted by critics on Rotten Tomatoes. Right now, it's still standing at 100% with 55 reviews. Wow. It seems, it seems to be pretty good. I think Get Out ended with 98%, but on March 22nd, I think we'll all be able to formulate our own opinions on what's going on. But at least as far as horror movies are concerned, that's a pretty good sign. I can't wait. Now, uh, Christy, so... <laughs> Y'all, <laughs> y'all be on the lookout for a uh, 800 year old mummy head. Um, I'm. I think Moni has already established that uh, Ireland seems to be the uh, Florida of the world, um, <laughs> and they uh, never disappoint for sure. Um, vandals stole the head of an 800-year-old mummy in Ireland. Um, they broke into an historic church in Dublin and stole the head of an 800-year-old mummy nicknamed the Crusader. The grim discovery was made by a guide at St. Mission's Church. He was getting ready to open the site to the public. Um, in addition to the Cru Crusader, several other corpses were damaged. What the fuck is wrong with people, including a nun dating back 400 years ago? They broke open the vault. It's a heavy, big steel door and broke open one of the coffins. Parts of the contents of the coffin have been dragged out, says the Archdeacon of Dublin, Dave Pierpoint. Damn, these people who have been lying at rest for years and years and, ha and to have them desecrated in such a sacrilegious way is so distressing and disturbing. I can't put it in words. I'm quite disgusted. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's kind of a know. sad take on the whole thing, you well, know, yeah. Sheesh. what would you, I don't even know if I would want to steal something that I could never show anybody. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's you why know, <laughs> the person, when they, you know, when somebody stole the Mona Lisa, it's like, why, what the hell? It's not like you can put it up in your apartment or something. I mean, it's like yeah. the most famous yeah. painting in the world. <laughs> you dumbasses. I mean, and I, I can't, can't sell it. Like that you could black market. 
I but like guess. something like this, I read a story. It was a fiction story, but it was still it was about a guy who kept something from his museum that didn't belong to him. It ruined his whole fucking life. He couldn't even let people like come visit him at his house because he was afraid they would discover what he had done. Yeah. Like, Stupid. I don't know. I don't get it. Is what I'm saying. That and stop then it, it, people. Being stop it. Dead people. Like, let them be. Like, yeah. how fucked up do you have I to be? I hope the biggest curse ever. <laughs> He's probably gonna be haunted now. He's gonna like return the head and be like, I'm sorry. Like those people that always it's take totally the fun. volcano yeah. pieces and then return them in um, Hawaii. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They're like every time I since I took this rock, my life's turned to shit. Take it back. <laughs> but think about all the crazy shit that goes on. Like, does this really surprise you that someone would do something like this? No, no. but it's just disappointing. I, mean, I feel not like a in mother. The Florida of the world. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> mad. I'm just disappointed. That's my typical mom line, and that pretty much yeah. applies here too. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, let's move along from. Um, just horrible criminals uh, <laughs> to uh, what you got for us, Moni. Well, just kind of going along with our Bigfoot theme of the last couple of weeks. Which will be posted uh, today. For $5,000. <laughs> what's that? I said, which will be posted today. The oh, Bigfoot yeah, episode. That, good. I'm running a little behind. What you going to do? It's all good. We're all a little behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, for $5,000, you can hunt Bigfoot with Jose Canseco. Uh, so did you guys know that Jose Canseco was like a truth seeking, like that's his post MVP life is, uh, is a truth seeking and trying to find aliens and trying to find all this stuff. Have you heard that about him? No, actually the things that I hear of him, I think have been more on the political end, you know, of things, but I didn't even know that he was into this. I'm not a fan yeah. of his. I think he's as dumb as a bag of hair. So this, I have zero <laughs> desire to go Bigfoot hunting with him. <laughs> I can just picture it now. We'd be like bashing our heads in, just trying to hear him like complete a sentence. It's just... But it's not even just going with him. It's five stacks to go with him. So no. Yeah. <laughs> even I'm more so. I'm hoping that that covers like your expenses along the trip. Uh, it would have to, I would think, but, uh, apparently he also had a series of tweets a few weeks ago saying that aliens had given him the secrets to time travel. So oh that God. sounds like he's totally <laughs> sane. He's bananas. Going well. <laughs> and you're, you said you would be in his RV with him. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to be yeah, in an RV yeah. with a nutter like that. I mean, like, if he knows the secrets of time travel, maybe he could use it to get the fuck out of here. Bye. Uh, because he also apparently last July responded to the Me Too movement by bragging about having been molested by lots of women. Lovely. So he's just, uh, my, he's a really. <laughs> my question is, it says, I will help you book your flights to Vegas and set itineraries. So Bigfoot is in well, Vegas. It's, 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 it's anywhere, I guess it's, it's where it Coffee. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. I mean, I was I just Vegas can't. Two weeks ago. Uh, you see a lot of shit there. I'm not sure if Bigfoot <laughs> is one of the things you see, but you know, for 5K, who knows? Exactly. So, wow. He's there. Up there. You Take, you he's like. You want to He's like Bigfoot's enabler or he's like, charge people $5,000 to find me and I can have gambling money. <laughs> he's like, well, yeah. <laughs> well, you I want to molest is... can take go and travel in time with him and yeah. everything else. It only costs you five grand. So you're welcome. <laughs> well, I, well, apparently there's 10000 less dollars that he can count on uh, on this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, definitely not for well, me. <laughs> Well, let's go a little bit back in time, back to 1982. Ooh. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the movies that came out in 1982, including Poltergeist, which is the movie that we are going to review today. So in 1982, it brought us The Thing, E.T., Blade Runner, Conan the Barbarian, Tron, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, The Dark Crystal, The Toy, The Last Unicorn, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, Rocky III, Swamp Thing and Star Trek The Wrath of Khan and also Annie. Now there were other movies that came out that year but I'm just kind of highlighting yeah. and maybe it's, maybe it's like my bias towards uh, you know these movies were the movies when I was a lot younger so I always remember them now some of my favorites of course is Poltergeist, uh, The Thing, Conan the Barbarian um, Swamp Thing and the Dark Crystal and the Best Little Horror House in Texas. I even have that on Blu-ray. That that one, uh, that's a good movie. I cannot believe all these movies came out in the same year. I was obsessed with 
several of these movies. Poltergeist, of course, um, E.T., uh, Tron, The Dark Crystal, The Last Unicorn. I'm still obsessed with The Last Unicorn. Um, and Swamp Thing was my jam. I freaking, which they're, I think they're remaking it or re-releasing it or something. I just saw news about Swamp Thing and I was like, holy shit, I was obsessed with that movie. Every time I went to the damn video store, that's the first one I wanted to rent. And my mom wanted to like kill herself. She was so tired of seeing that movie because I was like, I want to get <laughs> Swamp Thing. Oh yeah. Uh, and back in the day when it came on HBO, I used to watch it every time it came on. Yeah. I, I was, I was watching that along with Paul guys are any yeah. of these movies that are on here some of your personal favorites Moni? i love poltergeist which is obviously what we're going to talk about today the thing is way up there for me um i have seen a lot of these other ones but again sorry a lot of them came out kind of when i was born you were so, like a year uh, old right <laughs> yeah so as a horror fan obviously like the thing and and um some of these other ones i've seen because of that reason but i haven't necessarily gone back and watched all of these. I've definitely seen the toy. I don't even know what the last unicorn is. Oh is that God. one any good? Should I check that out? It's a cartoon. Yeah, it's a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. I nice. freaking love it. I, Clearly, I, I need to see the best little whorehouse just for the Oh, name, yeah. But, you uh, absolutely do. It's hysterical. <laughs> um, it's, it's, one of those, it's one of those movies that there are moments in it where there's kind of singing. But the, the, the highlight of it is when they're singing in the whorehouse. Yeah. It, it's got Burt Reynolds and Dolly Parton in it. So, I mean, come on. You can't go wrong Yeah, there. I have heard of it. So I, I definitely, it's one of those that's been on my list. So now I've got to make it a priority. And I'm sure this will be controversial for some people who are major, major Star Trek people. But Wrath of Khan was my favorite, my favorite. Like remembering when they put that thing in his ear and it like yeah. controlled, like I was so freaked out by that it freaked me the hell out i remember that like watching that and being completely totally freaked out um and so that ever since i just because of the my response to that one part in that entire movie that was the uh that was my it's been my favorite ever since it's just crazy to see all of these listed together and seeing that they were all released in the same year that just really blows my mind wow I don't think that you're going out on a limb by saying that Wrath of Khan is your favorite. I, most oh. of the people that I know who are <laughs> Star Trek fans think, you know, say that that's one of their favorites as that's well. Good. It's my favorite one. Yeah. Uh, definitely. I didn't know. Um, I'm not a Star Trek person per se. I mean, it's fine. I'll watch them. Um, but so I don't know, like some people might think that one's crap. I don't have no idea. But um, yeah, I definitely loved that one. That was awesome. All right. Well, so that, well, Let's move on a little bit and talk about, you know, TVs, the TV set in horror and yeah. film. So we know that imagery is something that's uh, pretty prevalent in films and horror films, especially um, as an example, you know, the poltergeist poster. Um, we see Carol Ann gazing into the TV. And I just wanted to give a few examples of TVs being used in horror movies and the meanings behind it. Um, as I was doing my research on this, I did a little Googling and it was very hard to word things in a way that would lead me to a lot of the horror movies that have, you know, where the television set literally does play a part, you know, in the story. Mm -hmm. So I found this site called Horror Homeroom and they had, I don't know, maybe eight um, different movies listed. And um, I'm just going to give a few examples of this. You know, of course, we're going to do a review of Poltergeist today on the show. Um, and it suggests uh, an escalating anxiety about the absorption of children literally into the television. So we see in the movie that when Carol Ann's parents and siblings aren't paying attention to her, the TV is the babysitter. And I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that both of you have, have probably used the TV oh, as yeah. a prop. Hell know, yes. A time Life or two. Lifesaver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know, we all know that Carol Ann ends up disappearing through a portal and literally ends up in the TV. And there's a second scene in the movie where Carol Ann is staring at a static filled TV in the kitchen and her mother, Diane, tells her not to look at the static because it'll hurt her eyes. So as she's walking by, she clicks the TV to the next channel and it ends up being a war movie that Carol Ann continues to watch. So I thought that that was kind of funny that yeah. even when you think you're saving someone, they can't really... Um, escape certain things that they're seeing on television. 
And uh, another movie that's kind of, I have it up pretty high because this um, particular horror movie didn't really take itself seriously. And I thought that it was pretty good. was the first Scream movie back in 1996. Yeah, I still love that movie. That was great. Yeah. And and a suggestion in that movie of the dangers of believing that the rules of film and TV are real, so to speak, and the dangers of immersing yourself too fully in the television can be a disaster. I, I definitely can agree um, with that. So you have uh, Gore uh, Verbinski's uh, 2002 film The Ring that makes it clear that it's not so easy to stand outside to resist the seductions of of television. So I got a question for both of you. Has television symbolism been something that either of you have thought about when watching horror movies? Yes. Actually, it's funny that you had this um, to talk about today because, was it Friday night? Uh, I was re-watching the new Halloween film because my husband hadn't seen it. And they use television in that movie. And then actually I was reminded since the original Halloween is one of my favorite slasher films of all time, uh, that they use television a lot in that one. And especially in the first one, because there are children involved, uh, that is used as sort of a way to kind of escalate that feeling of dread. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, definitely the teenagers are running around like, I'm going to go have sex tonight. I'm going to party. And the kids they're supposed to be babysitting are just watching horror films, like probably that are too scary, like for them and that kind of thing. So I was just thinking about that. I actually mentioned it to my husband and I was like, the use of TV in this. He's like, yeah, they do that a lot. I'm like, but they're, that's kind of an homage to the original where they're kind of pulling that in, but it doesn't work as well in the new Halloween, just because there's not kids watching it. I kind of like what you're saying about like TV as babysitter and kind of beware the allure of the television. So yeah, just kind of interesting. I've definitely noticed it before. I actually never really put two and two together that that was kind of the message that, you know, movies like The Ring and Poltergeist, it, you know, I don't necessarily know if it was like that was their intent to, you know, revolve around that. But interesting that I just had never put that together um, as far as the TV, you know, the dangers of TV and then like. That literally either a monster or, you know, that little girl's like crawling out of the TV to kill you or it's sucking you in <laughs> to another world. And I just never, it's interesting. I never really thought about it, but it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, whenever you look at, especially in Steven Spielberg films and things like that, he always has, um, you know, different messages that kind of, uh, that he, kind of throws in there. But I think most filmmakers use that as an opportunity to, um, you know, to make certain points in their films. And uh, for the most part, sometimes, it, you know, most of the time for me, it works to get a point across, but maybe the delivery might be um, certain things that turn people off. Mm-hmm. You know, a big thread, you know, nowadays is, you know, people saying that there's, you know, too much politics or too much this, that, and other in movies, but that's always been an outlet that people, you know, got their messages out was through, um, you know, visual communication. So yeah, I don't necessarily have a problem with it unless you're like beat over the head and it's really pushing something on you. But for the most part, I think that people do a decent job of keeping that at a level that keeps the, uh, the movie enjoyable. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a fun way to set a tone. And I also think that, um, fun way to set a tone and that it's a nice way to kind of pay, pay honor to like, another film that you like like if you're the creator of this film and you're like hey this other film inspired me you could kind of throw it in there i think that's kind of cool too yeah and uh well you know what before we start our review let's talk a little bit about what a poltergeist is so in ghost lore a poltergeist which is german for noisy ghost or noisy spirit is a type of ghost or spirit that's responsible for physical disturbances such as loud noises and objects being moved or destroyed They are purportedly capable of pinching, biting, hitting, and tripping people. Most accounts of poltergeists describe the movement or levitation of objects such as furniture and cutlery or noises such as knocking on doors. They have traditionally been described as troublesome spirits who haunt a particular person instead of a specific location. Such alleged poltergeist manifestations have been reported in many cultures and countries, including the United States, India, Japan, Brazil, Australia, and most European nations. Early accounts date back to the first century. So this was the first time that I had watched Poltergeist in, you know, 
decades. I, mm-hmm. You know, I I just haven't revisited it. And I actually saw it on Amazon Prime, and that kind of put it in my head. <laughs> but hey, you know, I haven't seen that in a while, so I ended up choosing it for the show. And when I watched the movie. It was just as outstanding as it was however many years ago that I yeah. had watched it. Yeah. But I have to ask both of y'all, because I was talking to this uh, about this uh, with the person at work, about how PG movies back in the day are way more edgier than mm-hmm. they are today. Yeah. Did this movie feel like a PG movie to you? No, no way. way. No. Uh, there and uh, and as we were, I was thinking about this this morning. Um, first, Poltergeist is my absolute number one favorite horror movie of all time. Like I love this movie. I just think it's so freaking brilliant. And every once shit starts ramping up on this thing, it's fucking scary. I when I was a kid and I watched this movie, the part where he peels his face off in the bathroom. It oh. took me probably, <laughs> I, I want to say, six or seven years before I would w- watch that part. I had never seen it before. I always covered my eyes during that part. I don't know why. It was just, and then th- I think it was even scarier not watching that part because the sounds that y- he makes when he's peeling his face off, um, it definitely <laughs> is not PG. Yeah. There's no way in hell this movie would be PG today. I mean, yeah, that absolutely. blows my mind. I did not know it was PG. That's mind blowing to me because that movie is. is fucking scary. <laughs> and you know what? It's a little bit of commentary to me about American culture is that something like this can be so horrifying and yet be PG, th- be, be PG because there's no blood and there's no sex. And as soon as yeah. you don't have, ooh, bad words and you don't have, you know, sex happening, then it can be PG. But it's like, it's scary as shit. Like, what is wrong with everybody, yeah. you know? But, oh, no, it's it's words and sex that can hurt us. Like, hello, Puritans. Like, violence is scary and horrifying yeah. situations are scary. And that warrants more than a PG on this yeah. film. It doesn't have Absolutely. boobies, so it's PG. Yeah, exactly. What? No, right? not even a PG-13? <laughs> are you freaking kidding me? Well, I don't know, because in the show notes, I set the example, though. Another movie that I, that I love, it's super cheese, but it's a movie that I remember growing up and I have it in my collection, is Barbarella. Yeah. It was oh. rated PG as well. Well, I can't and if you see Barbara, that. Well, yeah. yeah, exactly. Very, exactly. that thing's sexual as hell. Uh, yeah, and there's boobies in it too. Yeah. I mean, any, you know, the, the see through space costume is still a winner. It was um, one of my first movies that, in which is funny because the sex scene in there is outer space. It's the first, like, quote unquote, sex scene I had ever seen. And I was really confused because they're like, <laughs> Not touching each other, but having sex. And I was like, is that how it's done? <laughs> like, what? I was so confused. So that's crazy. That for sure. Yeah, it is. So y'all ready to dive into uh, Hell the yeah. movie? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the movie starts off with um, Steve and Diane Freeling. Um, they're living a quiet life in a community in Orange County, California. And what the hell is it about Orange County, California that all these like horror movies and... <laughs> You know what? I I grew up there. It's the perfect place. That's where I spent the first, what, 32 years of my life. Uh, It's the perfect place to kind of have that whole, I don't know, kind of Stepford. Everything is perfect, but too perfect. It's it's easy to have horrifying things going on that nobody knows anything about. Um, Just like they show in this film, it's all new developments, expensive. Everybody's trying to kind of keep up with the Joneses. It's like the perfect place for a nice family who's trying to kind of keep up to have something really horrifying happen to them, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, so they're trying to live a quiet life in a community in Orange County, California, called Cuesta Verde, where Stephen is a real estate developer, and Diane looks after their three children, Dana, Robbie, and Carol Ann. So Carol Ann awakens one night and begins conversing with the family's television set, which is displaying static following a sign off. So I know that there are some listeners here who are old enough to remember a time when television used to have dignity and was actually off the air and all static from 11 to 5 a.m. So Isn't that crazy? I remember that. I remember that. Look, basically, when Ron got off work and went home, all of our TVs went off. And when Ron came back to work in the morning, all of our TVs came back on. So it's so funny to watch this and remember that, oh, yeah, that used to be a thing. Um, 
So the following night, while everyone else is asleep, Robbie is staring outside at a twisted tree outside his window. And he's freaked out by it so much that he retreats to his parents' bedroom to go to sleep with them. Carol Ann in the other room starts fixating on the television as it starts to transmit ecstatic again. Suddenly, a ghostly white hand emerges from the television, followed by a violent earthquake. As the shaking starts to subside, Diane, Steve, and Robbie awaken, and Carol Ann is at the foot of the bed, and she says, they're here. here. The Uh, most famous, (laughs) famous horror phrase of all time. Yeah. Damn, that's scary. Yeah, lots. Yeah, that that's one of those phrases where definitely someone says it. If, if you're above a certain age, you definitely know what they're talking Hell about. Yeah. All right. So the very next morning, all types of strange events start happening. Uh, Steve ends up calling his job and realizing he's the only person um, that had felt the earthquake. So at the breakfast table, a drinking glass filled with milk spontaneously breaks in Robbie's hand. He then looks down to find his silverware at the breakfast table has all been bent. A little bit later on, we see Debbie showing Steve that their furniture can move from one side of the room to the other on its own if it's placed in certain places. Now, would y'all have freaked out by the furniture moving? Because it seemed like Steve was the only person who was slightly disturbed by it, and Diane and Carol were just having a blast with it. Uh, it was that would have creeped me the fuck out. I actually really like that scene because of like that jump moment where her daughter's right in front of her, so it couldn't have been her daughter, and she like looks away and looks back, and all the um, chairs are stacked. TV that's people? creepy as shit. Like yeah. that, that's like grab your kids and leave the fucking house moment for me. But <laughs> yeah, you think? Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's when she officially names them the TV people. Yeah. And I and yeah. I wonder, something I always wondered is like when they're sliding Car- when she's sliding Carol Ann across the floor, I'm wondering if that was one of the things that kind of alerted this this um this spirit, you know, to you know, the presence of a living thing or whatever. But we'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, I think that um Steve's reaction <laughs> he just he just looked like he was shook. He wasn't really yeah. going yeah. He just looked like it really hit him somewhere. And, you know, he was like, I don't know what the hell is going on here. But um, later on that night, um, the tree that Robbie was looking at in his backyard ends up coming alive and grabbing him through the bedroom window. So, of course, Steve hears what's going on. He goes up to rescue Robbie. And, of course, that separates people out a little bit. So Carol Ann ends up getting sucked through the portal in her closet. Because Diane and Steve are outside trying to pull poor Robbie, you know, out of this tree. And that was a pretty uh, cool sequence as well. One thing that they did well in this movie is they really showed up, um, you know, people's anxiety. Like they always it's very busy. So Mm -hmm. it's understandable that they could be in one part of the house, maybe helping someone else and then forgetting the child in another part of Mm -hmm. the house. Uh, I thought that that was pretty cool. So what did y'all think? The effects for the tree eating Robbie. Well, at I the time, time. go okay. ahead. <laughs> oh, same time. Go I, ahead. I'm a huge Ghostbuster fan. Like that's the one that I watched as a kid, like over and over. And so a lot of the effects kind of harken back to obviously that same era of that's the best they could do. And you know, this movie actually watching it again last night made me realize I don't need fantastic special effects to get the point and to feel scared. Yeah, it takes you out of it a little bit when you see like a terrible effect and you're just like, ah, oh, come on. But part of me was also um, like when the chairs were moving and stuff, just kind of admiring how really simple tricks that they were doing. Like obviously that must have been on a string somewhere and like were still super um, useful and super able to kind of get that impact across of like, okay, so it's obviously a string, but you're still able to put yourself in that situation. Like, holy shit, that's really scary. You know, so I think this movie is just so timeless that way is like the effects don't have to be perfect to make this movie scary and the characterization's good and kind of a, a great story and everything else. Well, you know, looking at the effects in themselves, I mean, they hold up to me as well. I thought that they picked their spots and um, I thought a lot of that stuff really did work. And you can really tell Spielberg's touch um, on things as you go through them through the movie, um, yeah, how they use music and yeah. they, they just, <laughs> this is probably, uh, at least to me, probably the most perfect, uh, horror type movie 
that I've seen because I Great. didn't really have uh, any part of this movie. It didn't feel like it drug. It always, you know, it always had you involved in something. Yeah. And I thought that the music was great as well. So um, after Carol Ann is sucked through the portal in her closet um, and they save Robbie, they end up going back upstairs and they can't find her. So they look in the closet and then they dig all of this stuff that was being sucked through the portal um, away from the front of the closet. And then there's something the size of a little girl's body with a sheet over it. And it ends up being the clown. Now, I don't want to talk about the clown too much in this because the clown has its yeah. own spot a little bit later in the movie. But they think that it's Carol Ann and they think that she's dead. They pull off the sheet and it's the clown. So the Freelings realize that she's been taken when they hear her voice coming from the television set that's turned to an um, to an empty uh, channel or a static um, static field channel, so to speak. So they end up calling a group of parapsychologists from UC Irvine, uh, Dr. Lesh, Ryan, and Marty. They visit the Freeling house to investigate, and they determine that the Freelings are experiencing a poltergeist intrusion. They discover that the disturbances involve more than one ghost. So during their investigation, we see a sequence where 100-year-old jewelry falls from the ceiling and the spirits of the dead start emanating through Carol Ann's bedroom door. They disperse and fly through everyone in the room. All of the events are recorded by the parapsychologist's equipment and also drives Marty to quit. And Ryan stays with the family while Dr. Lesh leaves to temporarily analyze the findings. Now, uh, um, what did y'all think about the sequence of Debbie calling out the Carol Ann when, you know, when they're trying to figure out where she is? Um, I mentioned before that these scenes stay very busy, but the character of, of Debbie is a really great character. Um, I don't have, I'm going to have to pull up my IMDb. And, um, do y'all know the actress's name? I just didn't click on the link for the IMDb. The mom? Yeah, Joe the Beth mom. Williams? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she's awesome. She yeah, she is awesome and um, a very. That scene relies on the strength of her acting because yeah. you don't see Carol Ann go through her. I mean, you see like a, a wind whoosh. And also for the investigators to believe her, it's like, yes, they've seen other things. But as far as this moment where she feels her child, uh, that's something that they can't measure per se. And so just her performance of like, this mom, it's so it, powerful. Christy, let yeah. me, it's so fucking relatable as like, Oh, totally. You can see why these people have stayed in this house because they, they believe their daughter's there. They know their daughter's there and you can see, uh, the desperation and they're, they're shaking. They're nervous of like living this way and not letting anyone know the hell that they're going through. And then the moment where her daughter, she feels her daughter and she can smell her. Like that's so mm -hmm. real as a mom, like, yeah. holy shit. That, that was really gr well done by on her part. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. It's really even more, you know, just effective when you are a parent. Like I watched that, that scene so many times as a kid and yeah, it was impactful, but definitely get your feelings out when you, uh, when you see it now as, as a mom. Yeah. Well, well, also the parapsychologist, as we're going through this journey with Carol, she's putting her faith in these people. And a lot of the things that they're seeing were seemingly new things to them as well. Now, would your first step would be to call some paranormal investigators or would your first step would have been to call the police? Man, we're the wrong audience for that because we watch too many horror films. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I guess you call the police and report a missing person because I tell you what, that's covering your ass. Unfortunately, in this day and age, just yeah. in case she turned out to be regular kidnapped or something like that, you need to cover your ass so it doesn't look like you did that <laughs> to her. Yeah, so exactly. I guess you make that report, but after that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, if this goes wrong, they're going to swear down y'all killed that little girl. Mm -hmm. So, well, um, That's the <laughs> problem, exactly, because like, if they report it, like, how would they – how would they do what they needed to do to get her back? Cause they, you know, they knew it wasn't something that it wasn't a human that had taken her. So it was just, what a weird position to be in. Like, what do you do? If you call the police, then the police are going to be on your ass investigating you while you're sitting here trying to get your kid back. That would be, but again, like you're saying, you definitely want to cover your bases because no telling what the turnout 
like what would happen. So what a- it was nice in the purpose of this film, though, to not waste time with the whole cliche, like cop has suspicions about you yeah. and cops on your ass. And then cop comes around when he sees irrefutable evidence. Like it's kind of nice to not waste time in this perfectly told story, like having that whole element in it. And also just to shout out the casting, because everybody who played the parapsychologists were great. And, and I guess now we can kind of go back to what um, Christy was talking about earlier with um, with Marty, who ended <laughs> who ended up apparently being so shook that he quit. But um, I wanted to ask y'all, you know, at least up to this point in the movie, what were your favorite scenes? And I actually put in the show notes, you know, mine was easily Marty hallucinating that he was pulling his face off yeah. in the bathroom. I yeah. like Christy. When I saw that shit, I was like, oh man, you know, that was, it was just, <laughs> it was pretty messed up. And then there's always something about like wet meat hitting the bathroom sink oh, yeah. with the blood yeah. going down the drain <laughs> that, that makes you, yeah, that makes you kind of stick to your stomach. But um, were there any other highlights up to this point that stood out to you, Moni? The clown, anything with the clown. Yeah. 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 And I don't know. If- Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> We're no, just no. talking yeah. all over each other today, aren't we? Yeah. For sure. Um, one of the things that really impacted me, and I guess we haven't got it's right after this point, but the the part the stairs when they start coming down the stairs, and it was right after yeah. he peeled his face off. Um, that really just blew my 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 mind. Like I was like as a child just mesmerized just with the way they did that. Um, that was probably one of my favorite, favorite scenes, um, barring of course the clown that ruined me for clowns for my entire life. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that scene was just, I don't even know why it was just so sad and kind of beautiful and scary Mm -hmm. all at the same time. And it just really stuck with me. Um, we kind of spoke on that earlier. It's, it's kind of a mixture of all of those things that you said, along with the music that they're playing, the way that the lighting is hitting everybody, and then, of yeah. course, the expressions of all the all the actors and actresses. I think that they really sold that they were seeing something for the first time coming down those stairs. So I totally agree with you. That was a that was definitely a great moment. And then when they kind of went away and it kind of, you know, touch them somehow. I don't know how to really explain it. You can see it, you know, when you watch the movie, but I thought that that was great. So after all of those things happen and they start um, discovering the disturbances, um, Dana and Robbie are sent away for their safety. And Steve finds out in an exchange with his boss, Lester Teague, played by the late James Karen, who passed away the, um, around the middle of, or the, you know, the, the last bit of last year, that Cristo Verde is built where a cemetery was once located. Steve is also offered to be a partner at the firm that has future plans, including building a community at another graveyard site on the hill right above Cristo Verde. So I just want to ask you all a question about superstition. Are you for or against building over or relocating the dead for a housing community? Well, it's one of the reasons why this works so well in Orange County and out in Southern California in general. Like, for instance, I live backed up to two different um, Indian areas, uh, Native American areas. It's Pala and Pachanga, literally right behind um, the street, just behind mine. And then it's it's Pachanga across the street and it's Pala right behind us. So it's kind of in Southern California, unfortunately, for better or worse, it's par for the course. Like, you're not going to build something new that isn't on top of, you know, probably Native American land in general. I don't know so much about burials, but, you know, people were buried where they were buried. Uh, I'm definitely not for it, but that's kind of how it is out here. And that's why Orange County, you know, it works really well because that's actually what they do still there. Yeah. I mean, I think it's not a good idea. I think it's disrespectful of the dead, but I mean, our entire planet is a cemetery, so (laughs) I'm probably sitting on a dead body right now. Um, I did, when I posted a video um, on our Patreon, I showed a spot up here. Um, There's a historic historical cemetery there's a couple of them over where the old mill was during you know that was a big um civil war uh hot spot um they took over that mill and used that area as kind of like a base camp and um right down the street street from there is an old cemetery and when you walk 
down the rows of the um, of the gravestones, they just stop. I mean, they just run into a fence. And then on the other side of the fence are homes. And one of these homes was um, they had a gravel driveway and they were paving. They were getting it um, cemented and they had to dig down a little bit and hit a coffin in their driveway and had oh to go gosh. and get it excavated. And so they, I mean, they apparently did that right down the street from my house, um, which is really bizarre. And these people are all, all aware that this is, you know, like they've, they've hit coffins and other backyards and stuff um, several times. So there's I, a shopping center right down the street from my house. And they have, if you live out in the Temecula area, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They have uh, two, I think, higher up, like, chief, you know, Indians buried there. And they built a Coles directly next to it. And they ended up building, like, a little tiny, like, Q&A historical, uh, basically kind of like a little shack almost. Mm -hmm. that You can come and ask volunteers questions about the history of the area. But it's just so funny to have, like, can't build here because there's two bodies. And then, like, right next door is, like, Walmart and Kohl's and, like, all these other mm -hmm. things. It's just kind of part of the charm out in this area, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Well, um, well, so the remaining parapsychologists, Dr. Lesh and Ryan, they end up calling in the big guns after what they had just seen, a spiritual medium, Tangina Barons, who's played by Zelda Rubinstein, who's a fixture in all these poltergeist movies. She is so great mm -hmm. um, in, you know, oh, in yeah. this movie. She is fantastic. Yeah. Now... Have you? How many Poltergeist movies were there, though? There was Poltergeist was two for certain. Yeah, there's but... three. I think four. I want to say yeah. I I didn't. And then the remake. Yeah, the remake yeah, was right. done really right. well. I was happy with the remake, but I'm not real thrilled with the even part two. I mean, I was so excited when I found out they were going to have a part two. Um, and that's when um the actress and I cannot remember her name um was really ill. Um, and she died really young, but um, in that movie, Poltergeist 2, you can just tell she's very ill. She did not look good. Her, she had some weird disease um, that she ended up passing from, but it was, was not well done at all, I thought. Oh, we fan. could do a whole other show. There's There's actually been a documentary about the curse yeah. of the poltergeist yep. franchise, but, um, all the actors basically getting extremely ill, uh, all the crew that worked on it, having Dominique weird, Dune was violent killed. things. Yeah. By things her happen boyfriend. To them. There's, yep. there's a lot. Yep. yep. Mm, well, Hey, I'm with that. That sounds, uh, pretty, <laughs> sounds they, pretty interesting. They called it, they started calling it. Yeah. The movie cursed. Mm hmm. Okay, so when Tangina comes on the scene, um, she states that the ghosts inhabiting the house are in a different sphere of consciousness and are not at rest. Attracted to Carol Ann's life force, these spirits are distracted from the real light that has come for them. So Tangina then adds that there is also a dark presence she calls the Beast, who has Carol Ann under restraint in an effort to use her life force to prevent other spirits from crossing over. She also notes that the beast is disguising itself as a child. So Carol Ann thinks that she's talking to another child at certain parts mm -hmm. um, in the movie. But when Tangina, well, when she gives that monologue, I mean, it makes you want to run through the wall because she is so convincing and it really sucks you in mainly because she whispered mm -hmm. through the whole thing. Yeah. So, so it makes you really kind of, you know, move your head closer to the television. But when she ends that thing and it's like, now let's go get you your daughter. You're like, hell yeah, coach, you know, put me in the game. <laughs> let's let, let, let's get go. Get that girl. <laughs> yeah. She, you know what I'm saying? So I, I really do like Tangina as a character. So a little bit later on, the group discovers that the entrance to the other dimension um, is through the children's bedroom closet where we saw Carol Ann get sucked through while the exit is through the living room ceiling. So there's a masterful moment of levity when they're getting ready um, to go through to try to retrieve Carol Ann between Tangina and Diane uh, in this stressful moment um, when they're holding onto the rope and Tangina is like, I'm going in after her. And Diane is like, she won't let you. And then Tangina says, I'm going to go. 
And Diane says, but you've never done this before. And then she's like, neither have you. And she's like, you're right. You go, you know, because <laughs> I don't know. What the look the on her face on. is so priceless. She's like, it's... she just stops and she like freezes. She's like, you're right. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And that has to be, uh, um, it's definitely got to be a scary experience because you got all that light and all the wind going on, but they managed in this one sequence to have that moment of levity. And then they kind of snuck in the, you know, the, the kiss between Steve and Diane before she goes in. And then you've got all the lights and the wind. It was pretty cool how they, how they set that up. So they knocked a lot of thing out of the box in that one little sequence, but I thought that it was pretty cool. So how eager would either of you be ready to jump into another wherever dimension or another place to go get your kids? Is that something that you uh yep. you give the farewell kiss yep. and you just figure, that. hey, That's I'm I'm not coming back. <laughs> That's what you do. It's your kid, man. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, absolutely. So so how do you come to the decision which person's going to take one for the team? So is, is it you know so is it going to be you, Moni, or your or your husband? Oh, that's a good question. I think it has to be me, but that's more the dynamic as far as I am um, more sensitive, like spiritually or whatever else. He'd mm-hmm. probably just be like, "This none of this exists. I'm not going through no portal because exactly. there's no portal to go through. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, exactly. I totally trust that he could handle things here at home and with the other kid, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it'd have to be me. All right, Christy. Are you yeah. taking a dive? Yeah, I'm going. I mean, and again, Rick would be like... This ain't got, this isn't happening. It's like the monster is right in your face. No, <laughs> no, that's, that's not <laughs> but your daughter is point. gone. He's like, no, <laughs> she ran away. Yeah, There's at, another at explanation. Point, though, you, I think that you probably do have to believe it. I, I, I would probably be more like, uh, we might have to take an L on this, honey, but if you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got to figure out what we go tell the police. No, I, I, I understand it. I understand that you know probably anybody's going to dive through there for their kids, though. But yeah. I thought that that was a pretty good, you know, a pretty good moment. And also, they kind of explained earlier that. Um, we saw that Diane was the one that was mostly around Carol Ann, yeah. but we also found out that Steve was the one that was in charge of kind of disciplining the kids. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that they did make, you know, a, a very good decision because I think the last thing that Carol Ann heard was her dad say that she was going to get a spanking. If she yeah. Didn't know. yeah. <laughs> That's so, true. so that was a good, uh, that was a good decision. Yeah, I remember so, really quick. I'm sorry when you say that. Um, it just reminded me when I was watching that movie as a child. And I was like shocked because he was like, I, I would never hit the kids. I would never spank the kids. And she's like, say it anyway. And I'm like, what? You never spank your kids? Whoa, I want to be his parents. Like, I got right? spanked all the damn time. My God, I had to pick switches off the tree. Um, so I was like, so jealous of their family. I was like, wow, you don't speak. I'm moving in with you guys. I don't care if there's a portal in the house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also like, really, you don't spank. That was 1982. Man, parents yeah. were handing out ass whoopings. That's right. Out, right. right. Beat the shit oh, yeah. out of you for looking at them. That's something I'm not too old for. I got plenty of those. <laughs> yeah, like 82 was like the time where, you know, Lots of communities were closed. So if you went down the street and you acted up, you probably got a spanking at your friend's house. Seriously? And then they called your mom and then you got a spanking oh. when she got home. And then you got to get another one, Getting... you know, when your dad came home. So that was like a okay, chain reaction. Spank you with. Oh, and, shit. Yeah. A feather? I don't know. And you got yeah, exactly. spankings at school. You got spankings everywhere. <laughs> Nobody was afraid to hit you back then. I'll tell you that. So, so as the group attempts to rescue Carol Ann, Diane passes through the entrance tied by a rope that's been threaded through both portals. Diane goes in and manages to retrieve Carol Ann, and they both get pulled through and drop to the floor uh, from the ceiling. They're unconscious and covered in ectoplasm. As they recover, Tangina proclaims that this house is now clean. That is one of my favorite parts is yes, when she's getting pulled through and they hit the hit the ground with that wet. Yeah. Just that wet it's like a, uh, Yeah, it's like a like a like a what do you call that? Like a va- like a va- like a, va- like a I don't know which I lost the word for it. But yeah, that that stuff. It was almost like coming through a womb or something. It's crazy. Yeah. That was a big thing in the eighties too, because um Ghostbusters, remember it was all about the slime and the ectoplasm? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 
Blah. But, but this stuff that they were covered in, it looked more like just some. It looked like lighter colored coagulated blood. It just wow. looked pretty. It looked pretty <laughs> nasty. So shortly thereafter, the Freelings begin the process, obviously, after they're all back together of moving. And then we get to see that Diane has these nice white uh, gray hairs yeah. um, that popped out after that experience. I thought that that was a that was a great touch. So yeah. uh, a- after they're packing up their stuff. Um, and during their last night in the house, Stephen leaves for the office in order to quit his job. And Dana goes on a date, leaving Diane, Robbie, and Carol alone in the house. And of course, the beast returns and ambushes Diane and the children aiming for a second kidnapping by attempting to restrain, <laughs> to restrain Robbie and Diane. Mm-hmm. Now, this is where this motherfucking clown. God, yeah, I damn. had to the head. I'm sorry, but yeah, yeah the fucking yeah. clown. <laughs> it, 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 it comes into the picture here. So, oh. of course, while other people are, you know, why Diane is occupied, um, this clown that has been strategically placed throughout the whole movie, which should have kind of warned everybody that something was going to happen with it. So Robbie ends up being attacked by the clown. And as we see, he um, he's going to sleep and he throws like a, he tries to throw a jacket or something over it mm-hmm. and it yeah. just rolls off of him. And then he turns back around and the clown is gone. So he looks on one side of the bed. It's cool. He looks on the other side of the bed, mm-hmm. lifts it up, which is kind of a jump scare, you know, kind of to an audience. Mm-hmm. But when he lifts his head back up, the clown is behind him and it wraps his arms oh. around his neck. But oh, the, the whole configuration on of that the clown. face is God <laughs> dang. So, so now it's like the mad clown. Oh. Let me tell you something. Of all the things that happened in this movie, I remember this like it was yesterday. Oh. Um, mm. I, it was actually on HBO and I watched it at a friend's house and it was a beautiful day outside. It was like, um, you know, it was just a beautiful day, but it was during the day. And I remember seeing that sequence and walking home at like two or three o'clock. And I'm just, that's all I could think about was that damn clown. So when Robbie finally got super pissed off and started ripping it to pieces, that was like my hell yeah moment of yeah. the whole movie. Because that got me. I mean, I think that that's probably the only thing that's ever made me jump hardcore in a movie was that sequence. Hell yeah. I have a question for you guys about the clown. Mm-hmm. Up until that, uh, the this movie, can you remember any time before that? Because there was a time, obviously, clowns were invented to like bring joy and mm-hmm. happy and circus and good feelings. And now, obviously, now we have it and all those other things. Do you remember a time prior to this movie in TV or film that, that clowns were made scary? Or was this sort of the first introduction of like clowns are scary now? Ooh, I can't think of anything prior to that. Not you clowns, know? but dolls, like dolls. over made up dolls. Like um, there was a movie and I can't think of the name of it. it might've been named dolls. Um, and then a puppet. There was the one with the puppet, the ventriloquist puppet. That one fucking yeah. scared me when I was a kid. When did Puppet Masters come out? Or pu- puppet, Masters puppet Masters was yeah. in the 90s, I think. Um, okay. But that there was, was well one after. with the ventriloquist doll that um, was in like the 70s or maybe early 80s. That, But not a clown. Not that I can think of. Well, okay. the, the the funny thing about this clown, it wasn't even just that sequence. Like, that clown was literally wrestling with Robbie yeah. all the way up under the bed. Mm-hmm. And it was just, but it's it's the And it was change. laughing yeah. the whole time. Yeah, that crazy ass God, laugh. Uh. First of all, where, where did that laugh come from? Because I didn't even, you know what I mean? It's like oh, the poltergeist oh God, is a right? beast because it's totally. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was my, you know, that was my real gotcha scene from that movie. Yeah. Um, uh, in the master bedroom, Diane is attacked by an unseen force that moves her up the wall and over the ceiling in her room, which is another great sequence when you're mm-hmm. when you're talking about. I think actually this sequence was done in a house that um, they actually built. A, I think they built a room and then they put it on like this yeah. crane or something and they like turned the room so it looked like she was um, – she was doing that, but that yeah. was pretty. Uh, that was a pretty iconic moment as well. So the unseen force drives Diane to the backyard, dragging herself into the uh, swimming pool, and more like she kind of she kind of slipped in um, into the swimming pool. So skeletons surround her as she oh. tries to swim to escape, but she manages to climb out of the pool and make her way back to the house. Now let's talk about neighbors. 
Like these neighbors suck. <laughs> she's out there hysterical. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, out there hysterical. She's like, she's, help me, help me save my babies. And his wife's like, yeah. no. Like, what, okay, what another good so point for, for doing this in Orange County, because that's how we do out here uh, at OC and SoCal. It's just like, or we're right on top of each other because, you know, property values are so high. So they build the houses like, almost like condos or right next door. You can see and hear everything, but you don't get involved. There's no friendliness. I don't want to know my neighbor. Like you do your own thing. I do my own thing. If I saw that shit, I'd probably be like, yeah, fuck that. I don't know what that lady's doing. She's probably on some drugs or some shit. Like not my problem that's for you. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> was pretty, I mean, that was pretty weird. And, 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 <laughs> Both of the both of her neighbors, the married couple, they were just like, you know, no, I'm just not. I like the the guy kept acting like he couldn't hear what she was saying, which was code for I'm scared. Yeah. The wife was just totally, you know, losing her shit, just asking what those sounds were, but wasn't even concerned about, you yep. know, knowing that they had kids. So Mostly that because was, it's a bothering your ability to like watch TV at night. You know, why are you being so loud over there? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I know, right? So so <laughs> Diane ends up you know, saying screw them. You know, she runs back in the house and rescues the children and they eventually escape to the outside of the house to the, and they end up discovering coffins and rotting corpses erupting out of the ground in their yard and throughout their neighborhood. And, all you know, of course, um, these things were happening in the house as well. So as Stephen and, and uh, Diane return home from the mayhem, um, Stephen confronts Teague after realizing that rather than relocating the cemetery for the development of Cuesta Verde, Teague merely had the headstones removed and the bodies left behind. So the Freelings end up fleeing Cuesta Verde while the house implodes on itself and goes into a portal to the astonishment of neighborhood onlookers. Uh, the ending of the movie is a family checking into a hotel for the night. The door closes, and then it opens back up, and Steve rolls the television out onto the walkway. Now, that that was definitely pretty funny, a pretty yeah. funny note to end it on. But um, when we're talking about the... Um, uh, you know, the bodies. I thought that the bodies erupting out of the pool oh. and throughout the house, I thought that that was a definitely uh, a, a great touch. And the implosion of the house was pretty good, special mm -hmm. effects wise, in 1982. So did the movie in itself in the third act live up to your expectations of what a horror movie should be? Yes. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. The whole Very thing. much. Yeah, the whole thing. Like the ending, the beginning, the middle. It was all fantastic. And we didn't talk about it, but that monster, when it reveals itself at the end, and it's that oh, big yeah. old white skull looking dinosaur thing. I've got the that gift. The scared the <laughs> shit out of me when I was a kid. Holy crap. Yeah, the one yeah, you have the gif in here. Um, that was really scary. I, I just thought, can you imagine? Like, wow, it just, it, it was crazy, scary to me. Still Trying is. That door. Yeah. Cause, um, yeah, at that point, Diane was just, first of all, I mean, at this point, wouldn't you have passed out at least once? There's just too much shit going oh my on. Like God. I, I would just be like, oh my all gosh, hell it's breaks just... loose. It's just crazy. After that, after the rolling room, when she, you know, starts going up the wall, it was like, Whole, well, the, I guess the clown starts it. And then that, you know, when she hears Robbie crying and she goes to get up and then that's when she starts crawling up the wall. That, I yeah. mean, insanity after that. It just, like you said, it's just one thing after another in this whole movie. I mean, to have one of these scenes in a movie would be amazing. But when you have all of them in one movie, you're just like, you know, blown away. And I really did like the interaction between um, Steve and Mr. Teague when he was yelling, you yeah. know, hey, you just moved the gravestones. And Teague just looked like he was, you know, Shocked. he was just going to die right there. Yeah. yeah. And he was like <laughs> screaming, why? Why? Like freaking well, out. And you're just like, holy <laughs> shit. Like, I would like, be well, freaking out too. Bonuses. Well, the other thing that they've done in this is um, – they like, let me give you an example. The parapsychologist, when all of these events were going on, guess what? Their cameras actually captured it. Like they're the first person in the history of ever to actually yeah. 
but to actually <laughs> capture it, <laughs> to, to to capture what was going on. So I, I thought that that was um, that that was pretty cool, and also the fact that they made this the events that happened things that were visible to people in the community. Because when the house got sucked into the portal, all the neighbors were out. You know, people actually saw that. Mm-hmm. And um, seeing as the way the movie ended, what do you think happened the next day to the Freelings? <laughs> I mean, I don't care. I don't care not knowing. But but what do you yeah. think, you know, happened the next day when you know that so many people saw that? Like, what what, what what's your next step in the morning, Moni? I think the next day they were at a hotel somewhere just laying way low and, like, being together all in one room and probably not sleeping very well or maybe sleeping really well because, like, this whole nightmare that they've been going through for a while now is over. And I think by the end of that day, the media catches on and it's a shitstorm and it's probably, like, if they're smart, they're at a hotel and nobody knows, like, where they are because I'm sure the media at that house, like, at the site would just be insane at that point. And I don't think things could ever quite be the same, at least not for a lot of years. Yeah, I think they were probably enjoying some quiet and peace after all that. Yeah. I don't and think probably that there's book any deals and interviews coming out of the everywhere. Yeah. I don't think there's any insurance for that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Poltergeist just, insurance. <laughs> they are on the hook for all of that shit. They're nothing. like, so, what what's the report? Like, they're like an earthquake. An earthquake. They're like <laughs> they're like, what happened? Uh well Gas my house explosion. folded up inside of itself. Excuse me. They're on the hook for all that shit and Steve just quit his job. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that, that's real world shit. There, you you but... leave to another country, you change your name. I don't know what else yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I, I uh, you know, Chrissy, you were mentioning that this is your uh, favorite horror movie. <laughs> To be honest with you, after I'm going to tie this with Return of the Living Dead, which is another movie that James um, Karen is in. And um, it's definitely a tie because watching this, I was like, this this might be the the most well put together, perfect thing. And it all goes back to what we were talking about earlier with um, ratings. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is just totally not a PG movie. I mean, do you I mean, I don't know if it. Did y'all watch this? Did y'all watch this with uh, Chris? Did you watch this with any of your kids around? Or no? yeah, yeah. I mean, they. This, this is my house, so they have been um, accustomed to horror for a very long time. Um, they've seen this movie early on, um, and you know, Madeline did not hate hates that music at the end with the kids singing la 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 that <laughs> she yeah. hates yeah. it. It scares her. <laughs> And uh, my son, it didn't bother him at all. He's he's a horror movie. Uh, he he's got it. He he does not get scared watching horror. Madeline does though. She's the older one. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I I I it I still can't believe this is PG. There's no freaking way. Was the new Poltergeist PG? Does anybody know? I, I think it was PG thirteen. Okay. I just saw it at the library the other day. I want to say thirteen, but I'm not positive. Okay. I guess I can double check because there's this thing called IMDb. Right. <laughs> there's a thing called Google these days, Christy. You could look it up. Yeah, I can't check because this computer like cuts out on me. But um, yeah, I hope I hope it is. I don't. My girls are too little, and honestly, my oldest, she's only six, and she's so fanciful already. Like she makes up shit that isn't real. Uh, to suit her to uh, suit her narrative, I don't need like a misplaced hairbrush to be the result of a poltergeist. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, like yeah. it's already going to be her excuse to like I will sleep in bed with you forever because you know this hairbrush wasn't where it was supposed to be, and I'm sure it's a poltergeist. I'm just going to be like, no, let's, let's just not watch this movie. So <laughs> yeah, and and uh, I mean, if there is there anything else that y'all want to point out that maybe we didn't uh, cover. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys believe in poltergeists? Do you believe that that's a phenomenon that is possible? I believe it, but I don't believe it in this sense. I, this is not what poltergeist is, um, but I do believe it happens. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it's possible. I mean, people have seen all types of things, but some of the things that people see that some people claim might make something a poltergeist yeah. might be something that could be, you know, scientifically proven at why it's not but we just we're never going to know you know we're never going to know I, I don't think that poltergeist ex, um, exists in the context of how it was being presented you know yeah. in this movie but uh, who knows I the think- movie presents more like a demonic like overtaking but mm-hmm. if you've ever I think we've talked about the Bell Witch on this show before 
Um, something like the Bell Witch is more apt to have possibly been poltergeist activity if if it's real. Um, poltergeist activity usually the the kind of uh, psychology that's accepted a little bit about it is that it uh, surrounds a specific person. Like maybe that person's gone through some really crazy um, traumatic events. And that's kind of the theory with the Bell Witch is that she was like molested by her dad or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a strong personality kind of coupled together that can create like basically whatever storm or trauma is going on inside the person manifests physically throughout the household that they're in. So theoretically, like if these people, this family were to move, if it was Carol Ann that was causing all that, then that would go with them. Yeah. So just yep. kind of an interesting theory to put out there. Sorry, Christy, and I totally talked over you. No, no, yeah. I just, I, my, my personal belief with poltergeist activity is it's triggered by a person, a living person, um, like manifesting, like as you were saying, kind of manifesting an energy to, and it creates a haunting um, so yeah, you can't really move away from that. It has to be, mm-hmm. and a lot of times it's be- like pre pubescent teens, teen girls, um, can cause this kind of activity apparently, mm-hmm. which I've always found really interesting that that makes a lot of sense when you're 13, <laughs> 13 year old girls. Girl. Sure. You yep. do that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I have a so six year old that I could see having her be a poltergeist. Like, yeah. Of course. In our- <laughs> so do y'all remember earlier in the show when we were talking about, you know, your husbands and how they, you know, they wouldn't believe that it was going on even yeah. if they saw it. And remember mm-hmm. that Steve got that moment uh, as well, because when um, when Diane was going through, of course, she says, don't let go, which automatically says, oh, shit, something's about to happen and he's going to let go. And then when that skull came out, that was a scary moment. That was a jump scare moment as well. Mm-hmm. When the big skull came out of the closet and screamed to Steve and he and he let go of the rope. Yeah, oh, that? that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That, that one's a good one. So if anything will make you a believer, it probably should have been that. But I, I just wanted to get that in because I, I was actually really impressed rewatching it after so many years, seeing how good some of these practical effects and wind machines can be. Yeah. <laughs> um, Simple. Uh, well, I, I don't have anything else. I think that we uh, covered everything. And actually, this is a very this was a good show. This is a fun show to do on this particular yeah. um, movie. So uh, what do you have for us uh, next week, Moni? Well, as Yardley mentioned, we are going to cover Us. So that's the new movie coming out. And if you don't want to be spoiled, please skip it and come back to it once you've had a chance to see the film. But I'm very excited to see it. Again, as he mentioned, uh, 100% ratings on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. And also, I am going to do a little ghost hunt again this weekend at a cemetery that I haven't been to in many years. And I was really young when I used to go, and I had a lot of experiences there that I kind of want to revisit and see now that I've sort of accepted that I feel like I kind of am more sensitive to some of these things, um, how different this experience will be for me. It's located in Riverside. It's well over a hundred years old. So I am excited to share, uh, anything that might happen there with you guys as well. So look for that along with our review and going through the movie us. And I'm um, also just real quick as I was on IMDb and I had mentioned puppet master. I haven't seen that movie in years. I don't remember being very impressed with it, but no. there's actually a new, one, it's called The Latest Reich, and it's from 2018, and it stars actually, um, it looks like it's available, I think, on Amazon Prime, and it stars uh, Thomas Lennon, who usually is known for kind of his comedic work, so uh, it has a 5.7 out of 10, and you know it went straight to video, so or straight to digital and whatever else, so anyway, if you guys are interested in the Puppet Master canon, maybe check this movie out as well. Hell yeah, I actually have. I wonder, I don't have that one, but I think I've got all of the other ones. I, I found it like in a, uh, might have been in a, I don't know if it was in a Walmart bin or somewhere, but it was like, like $5. All, yeah, it was like all of them, but it's not the nice. 2018 one. But uh, those are cool. I actually have the um, the figures of all of those things. Oh, oh you nice. do? Okay. Yeah, That's they're actually, they <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're propped up in my office at work, but, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's some guilty pleasure cheese as well. I mean, for me, if you can enjoy Chucky, you can enjoy, you, you know what I mean, the puppet yeah. master. Or, or if you can, you know, get through a Chucky movie, you should be able to get through these. But um, great selection. I look forward to that. And now while we're at it, why don't you give us your handle on social media? 
Uh, I am Rebel Moni on Twitter. All kinds of exciting stuff going on there as we move into WonderCon. Um, and also I am Moni Bear on Instagram. Cool, Christy. I am uh, at Creepin underscore it on Twitter and Creepin it Christy on Instagram. And you can follow me on Twitter at Militant underscore Marker. And um, go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash The Creepin' It Real Show. Um, nice. Christy's always posting uh, in Moni. Uh, they're always posting some funny um, <laughs> memes and information on there. And I try to keep trailers and things like that up there. And whenever I find something cool, I try to dump it as well. So check us out there. There's some very cool people who respond. And also, just want to let everybody know uh, we're totally in the feedback. So if you have any suggestions of certain things that you would want us to consider to do on the show, feel free to shoot us a message on Facebook or tweet us um, on the Twitters and uh, we'll definitely look at it because um, we definitely want to tailor content to things that people are passionate about or there might be something in pop culture that we don't know about that you can put us on to. So with all that being said, until next time, Creep It Real. Thank you, everybody. Ghost notes at the bottom of this conversation Drop my keys and phone against a rough pavement Screens crack but I still can't hear all right String of words that I think I've used before Can't think of another creature
Walking down the street All the honky people 